brethren, pray the Lord and welcome to this program again because it is through it that we connect up with uh, our Father who is in heaven. And we are in the program of finding God and we keep engaging with the word of the Lord. And so that in finding him there is joy, in finding him there is peace, in finding God there is comfort. In finding God we receive his favor from above. And so this time we are continuing with our biblical personalities. And just like I mentioned earlier, and I mentioned again, that biblical personalities teach us lessons so that in our life and during our generation, we can find men and women that please God. And when you please God, there is health. When you please God, there is life. When you please God, there is peace. And so at this moment, we're going to think about one other personality who is a little obscure, not very, very pronounced personality, but he did something that all of us ought to do during our generation. And this man that we're going to talk about is called Phinehas. He was one of those little known men when the people of Israel were on their journey to the promised land. And it was during the time of Moses when they were on the journey and moving, engaging with the tribes, engaging with other people, fighting alongside one another until they were able to enter the promised land. And this man Phinehas, the Bible talks about him as one of the children in the lineage of Aaron. Remember Aaron was Moses' brother. And they are the ones that are the priests in the house of the Lord. So Aaron had a son called Eliezer. Eliezer had a son called Phinehas. And Phinehas is the one that we're going to think about, talk about, and pick a few lessons from this man who is little known, but the act that he exhibited during his time teaches us lots during our time because our generations are similar. What happened to them still happened to us during our time if it is a sin. Now this man, Fina, has showing us how to deal with the sin. If it is a rebellion, we also find people who dealt with the rebellion and so many other things. So Fina has, we read about him in the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 25 and we're not going to take a lot of time reading the entire chapter because it is, uh, the time is not enough. But let us concentrate on at least from verse 6. And uh, just want to read up to verse 15 because it's the word of the Lord. And the Bible says, And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family. In the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation of Israel, while they were weeping in the entrance of the tent of meeting. You know, people had moved and there was something that was not well. They were weeping. They had gone to the tent of the meeting and were pleading with God over something that was not right. And in verse 7, the Bible says that when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, I have already talked about him, Son of Aaron, the priest, saw it. He rose and left the congregation and took a spear in his hand. Now, Phinehas is following somebody, the man who has picked a woman. And as people were pleading and crying to God, for him he picked a Midianite woman, a Gentile, and he entered a tent in the presence of Moses. And other people were meaning business before the house of the Lord. This man, stubborn one picked a woman, and what were they going to do in the tent? And so in verse 8, Phinehas had followed with a spear and went after the man of Israel into the chamber and pierced both of them. They were in the tent. And the man of Israel and the woman threw their belly. I mean, he pierced because they were doing something that was abominable in the presence of the Lord. Thus, the plague of the people of Israel was stopped. You see, these people were pleading with God because there was a plague. A plague is a calamity that had befallen Israel. And in verse 6, we saw that they were weeping in the tent of meeting. 
and people were crying. Now, this stubborn one decides to pick a woman, a Midianite, who doesn't, you know, and because actually these people had been yoked with the pagan people, and yet they had been warned not to do anything with pagans. They had been warned never to do anything with issues of idolatry and adultery and fornication. Now this stubborn man picked this woman and entered the tent and in the presence of all the elders of Israel. Now one of them, Phinehas, burns with zeal. And so it is something that actually I want to share that actually one burning with zeal for God and burning with zeal for the righteousness of God. And so this man, Phinehas, gives us an example. And so the Bible says actually he went and killed them in the tent of meeting. Now, and immediately that happened, the Bible says that actually the plague subsided. God's anger was stopped. And so you can read on because actually it has lessons for us. There are a few verses to just 18 verses in these numbers, chapter 25. And so friends, there are lots of things that we receive warnings from God. And because of disobedience, we go against the will of God. God had already warned the people that you are moving into the promised land, but this is the yardstick. This is what you should follow. And people are meant to follow God's instructions. Remember, they had already received the Ten Commandments. And in the book of Numbers, it just, I mean, recounting what was happening along the way. The wars that they fought. You know, the calamities that they faced, like including this one. And everything else that happened. And knowing the numbers of the children of Israel that moved and reached the Promised Land. And now, something happens that was not okay. And God was not happy with it. And so there are lessons that we pick from this man, Phinehas, who follows... And because he burns with zeal for righteousness, he runs and follows these people that were profane, the people that were evidently, evidently sinning against God, the people that were openly sinning against God. And, of course, this speaks to our generation. You remember that we are living in a generation where people take things for granted. It's because of stubbornness. It's because of, you know, they think that they are so bold and they sin against God in the open. And issues that we are addressing now are issues that affect our spirituality, are issues that affect our progress, because actually God has placed us here to progress and spiritually grow. But even in worldly matters, we have to grow and do well. And now, in this kind of portion, we address like issues of homosexuality and issues of lesbianism that are eating up our society, and people do it openly. Now, Phinehas picks a spear and deals with people like that. Now, there are lessons, friends, that we learn about this man, his zeal, his commitment, his enthusiasm for God, and how we pray that during our time, we have people that have the zeal, burning with them, speaking openly against evil. It may not necessarily be mean, meaning that actually you pick a spear or a blade and shoot somebody, but speaking against and opposing evil in our society. So Phinehas, this man, became prominent, prominent because of his act that he did. He, he was a leader. And um, the reason why the Bible writes, the Bible writers pick this story and forward it to us. And indeed, he was a very, very godly example to us. And so the reason why I bring it at this time is that because we also, are facing challenges like Moses did. Moses was a leader, but behind him were the people like this who were doing things like that. He had other leaders. Joshua was with him. And Aaron, the grandfather of this boy, of this young man, sorry to call him a boy, but he was a young man, and he was burning with zeal. And so Phinehas provides for us a godly example, and he left an example for the Israelites to follow. And so what we pick openly from Phinehas is opposing disobedience openly. And he does something that acts as an example for the rest. And indeed, because of what he did, God's anger subsided. You know, there were times when other plagues came 
among the Israelites during the time of David, there was something that he did and God sent calamity. People died. People died until actually they pleaded with God and God stopped it. And who knows why we, in this, during our, our time, we are also having very many calamities. Calamities come and go. But we need to look deep down in our heart. We need men and women with the Fenahar spirit to look deep down in our heart and oppose the evil. And those that we talk to, to repent and seek for forgiveness from God. So these numbers, chapter 25, verse 6, the Bible is very, very clear. And it gives us this, that, And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family. In the sight of Moses, can you imagine? Bold in a like that. In the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation of the people of Israel. While they were weeping. You see, we have so many things that we are crying to God about and we cry. The church is crying. But still in the same church, there are people that are doing evil things openly. And so the trap was there. One of the things that, that we learn is actually people set traps. The Midianites had set traps for the Israelites. The reason why this woman is picked because actually Midianite women had become a trap for the Israelites. And so even during our time, we are facing traps. People that are propagating homosexuality and lesbianism and other evils, they have set traps, money and things like that. But we need a Phinehas during our time. Traps, we need to beware. One, that's one of the biggest lessons that we pick. That actually there are traps all around us, but we need to beware. Now, sin, remember, that it poses a threat to our holiness. Sin poses a threat to our holiness. And so we, when we deal with it, it's critical, it saves us, it saves our life. And so friends, Jesus guides in Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 and 30. Now the Bible here says, if your eye causes you to sin, it says, pluck it out. That's better for you to enter heaven with one eye or without one eye than the whole of you being thrown into hell, the fire. That if your leg causes you to sin or your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Now, we need to cut off certain things during our time. And we pray that God enables us to cut off certain things. Like Phinehas did to cut off the, that man and the woman was called Kozib. And he dealt with them and that was it. So we need to cut off, um, cut off ties with the people that are propagating evil. Now the Lord praised Phinehas in the remaining verses from verses 11 to 13 that the man who was with zeal, the man burning with passion, the man burning with passion for godliness. We need men and women during our time who will be burning with you know, zeal for, you know, for godliness, for righteousness. And this is the time. So finally, sin threatens the body of Christ as we talk. Right from it was in the past, so it is now. We are threatened, and therefore we need to wake up. We need to arise like Phineas and other people. We need to arise against sin. Two, not just arising against it, but we need to speak against sin. Name sin. Sin is sin. Name it. And so we need to name sin. And number three, confront sin. Confront it. Attack it. And we need to speak openly against it. And then number four, repent of sin. Now, when we repent of sin, we restore our fellowship with God. And also restore our fellowship with other people. And so it is important that we repent of sin. And now these days, people just ask God, God, forgive us, forgive us. But they don't repent. We ask God to do his part of forgiving, but we don't name sin and say, God, I repent of my sin. One, two, three, four, five. Repent of them, name them, name them, and then you ask God to forgive. But many times our prayer that we make is forgive, 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 for God to do his work, his part. 
when we ourselves have not done our part of naming the sin that we are caught with. And so we need to repent and ask God, is it theft? Is it fornication? Is it adultery? Is it stealing? Is it, name it, say one, two, three, and then God will do his part than asking him, God forgive when I've not repented. So we need to repent of our sin. And the church needs to repent. Individuals need to repent. Everybody needs to repent. And we, we, we make our, our fellowship count again. And so finally, deal with the traps that are laid, temptations that are laid along, along the way. So we need to deal with the traps, not the traps and deal with them. So my friends, God has showed us an example through Phinehas and um, the plague ended. And who neighbor, who knows that actually what we're going through may, I mean, the challenges that we're finding, finding you know, the, the, the natural calamities, the diseases, the sicknesses that just drop like nothing. Who knows? But may God have mercy upon us. And so the plague ended. And we pray that God will enable us to repent of our sins and forgive us and do that everything that is will end and we shall keep moving on. Have zeal for godliness, zeal for righteousness, and God will Look down upon us with mercy and will heal our land. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>